Hi hey everyone, Phil Pendlebury here. Welcome back and I hope you're having a super mega large day. So here we are in part two of the little two part series. Does it, do we call it a series when it's two parts? I, I don't know. Anyway, it's part two of Demystifying Ara. In the last video, we had a look at how to set it up, what it is, what it does, and all the kind of technical ways of putting it and using it in your project. And in this one, it's a couple of practical examples using Wavelab and spectral layers. Once again, as I said at the end of the last video, if there's any comments, questions, or suggestions indeed for future you know, content, please do let me know because we're hoping to carry this on and I want to improve it as we go uh, to your needs. All right, um, like and subscribe, of course if you can if you feel like it okay we're not going to mention that again let's move into the project and have a look so here we are in nuendo 13 i'm going to get my headphones on in this particular case might be useful for you because some of the stuff that we're going to look at um may be quite sensitive you know maybe quite difficult to hear on speakers we'll try our best to keep it so that it's nice and general and that you can see and hear everything but you never know always nice to have a little pair of headphones on for these all right let's move into it like i said in the last video we we showed how to get our uh, all up and running how it works and what it is uh, so i'm not going to spend any time on that in this video if you want to have a look at the part one that will show you all the fine detail all the technical detail um, but I will kind of mention a couple of things, but not too much. So what we've got here is a little project and I want to show you WaveLab in action in ARA. We've installed WaveLab, which includes its ARA extension. And that means that we can now use it as an extension within our host. It's like a plugin, but you can do a lot more than you would normally do in a plugin. And we're going to have a look at using WaveLab as a correction tool in this particular case. After that, I'll show you some spectral layers as well. So we've got this flute sound here, which was provided to me by Felipe, the developer of WaveLab, and have a quick listen to it. Now, this is where the headphones come in. Although if we look at the file, yeah, you can't really see anything too drastically wrong with it. But if we loop it a couple of times, let's have a quick listen. You can actually clearly hear, especially with headphones on, you can clearly hear that there's a nasty click on the left channel there. Let's have another listen, just in case you want to turn it up and have a... And don't forget, by the way, we are still in uh, Nuendo's built-in audio editor here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use WaveLab to try and fix that. So the first thing we need to do is actually add our WaveLab extension to that file. So I've got the file selected. As I pointed out in the last video, this is three ways. One includes adding the extension to the entire track. But in this case, we just want to use that part. So we can go to the menu. We can go to Audio Extensions, WaveLab ARA, or my preferred method, which is to use the secondary click menu here on Nuendo, uh, which you may have assigned to uh, a particular key. I've got it assigned uh, to a key on my mouse. And we can go to WaveLab ARA. And after a second or two, we'll find that the file is now viewable in WaveLab inside Nuendo. So let's have another listen. All right. So let's note once again that you can't actually see anything wrong there. Maybe if we zoomed in massively, you might be able to see something. So let's just zoom back so that we can see the entire file. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the correction tab in WaveLab. So don't forget, we are inside Nuendo here. This is all taking place inside Nuendo, even though we're looking at an interface of WaveLab, which is 
quite stunning really so those people um, like myself that often refer to ARA as a plug-in well it's a little bit more than just a plug-in so in this particular case we can just click detect all errors after that's run we can do find next error and you'll see that there's really not much happening so what I like to do I've made my own little preset here you can edit these and you can change the sensitivity and the minimum audio level and so on. So I'll just show you my little preset that I use for this. As you can see, it's slightly different. So we'll go back to the default, which has sensitivity of 15 and minus 60. Everything else was still checked. And if I go to my preset, basically we've just changed the sensitivity a bit. Once I exit that, you can see straight away that WaveLab has picked up something don't know what but it's picked up something in that particular area there which is stunning so if we now click on find next error it'll zoom in and show us exactly what it thinks is the problem and that indeed is the problem that was the bit that you know made that clicking sound so let's go through that once again you can see that it's been selected there we can go to find next error and WaveLab has now zoomed in on that particular part. So we'll leave short resynthesis on as the error correction method. And all we have to do now is click correct error. Let's see what happens. And it's it's kind of magic, really, isn't it? I mean, you know, the, the saying goes that um, technology of the future appears like magic, I suppose, but I still find this really clever. And I hope you guys do too. It's part of the fascination of part of what we do, isn't it? So there's other ways you could do this. Um, Felipe said that in-painting may work better for complex waveforms, uh, but it depends on your source material. The point is that we've fixed that error now. Let's have a listen. Sounds pretty clear to me. And of course, we could do that with other errors if there were any in that file. So we fix the error. What do we do now? Well, I think most of you will have guessed what comes next. We literally just need to close down WaveLab and we right click on the part itself. We go to extensions and we go to make extension permanent. And what happens there, as I mentioned last time, the extension is removed, so WaveLab will no longer come up if we double click that part. We're back to Nuendo's built in audio editor. Aside from that, a new part is written into the pool with that correction made. WaveLab's gone, and that means that we've saved a lot of memory from having you know the whole of WaveLab or nearly the whole of WaveLab uh, within that project, and we end up with a fixed part. Fantastic. So let's now move on to another project and uh, I'll show you something that we can do in spectral layers within Nuendo. So what we've got here is a very badly recorded piece of dialogue and we're going to have a quick look at that. We did look at this in one of my uh, previous live streams. But we're going to do it really quickly because the point here is just to show you how we can do some stuff in ARA, but in this case, spectral layers now. So let's quick listen to the file. I like to call it a condition more than it is, is because it's induced, it's self-induced. All right, so as you can hear there, what we've got is a very badly recorded file. Not blaming anybody, it could have been, you know, it could have been a spur of the moment thing. Who knows how that happened? Um, but there's a lot of room ambience. There's some buzzing, humming, clicking, cracking, various things going on. And what we're going to do is try and clear that up a bit in spectral layers. I have uh, showed you some of this in fine detail before in one of my live streams. Now we're on the Steinberg channel. What I'd like to do is just quickly show you the process, bearing in mind that we're doing this now within Nuendo, um, in spectral layers within Nuendo as an ARA process. So that means if you have a hundred of these files all scattered along your project, we could deal with them all just like this. So first thing we do, as you know now, select the part and either up to the menu here, 
by audio extensions, or in my case, the right click menu, extensions, and in this case, spectral layers and not Wavelab. We've just done Wavelab, so let's do spectral layers. And now we can use Uendo's transport to listen once again to that file. I like to call it a condition more than this is because it's... Okay, and you can see that there's a good representation of the spectrum of what's going on there. There's a lot of things. Again, let's not go into it all now, but let's load up my little view, which shows the modules of spectral layers. And again, this video isn't really about spectral layers, so we're not going to dwell on that. But the modules are a way of building things up. I'm just going to quickly show you one process, which would be voice de reverb. So we'll bring up that process and we'll leave the reduction rate at 80% and we'll just quickly apply that. And let's have a listen. I like to call it a condition more than it is it's because it's induced, it's self-induced. So as you can see, we've managed to reduce that quite well, but it's not enough. So what I'm going to do is undo that. We'll go back to how we were before. I like to call it a condition more than it is it's because so what we're going to do now, we will try the voice denoise first instead. So let's have a quick look at that. We'll leave the noise strong. We'll leave it at 100% and we'll click apply. And let's have a listen to that. I like to call it a condition more than it is because it's induced. That's OK, but there's still some um, ambience there. So what we could do after that is apply the voice D reverb. And of course, we could also apply other things like unmixed noisy speech. Now, just as an offshoot, one of the beauties of spectral layers now with all these different modules of which there are many, many, many of them, um, is that we can make them into a chain so that we can do things kind of all at once. So I'll quickly show you, hopefully, if I bring up my module chain here, noise D reverb, there we've got a whole bunch of uh, processes that I did earlier, including a transcription, which we don't need. We also don't need to worry about all the controls right now because this is literally only for the benefit of showing you how ARA works and how spectral layers works as an ARA process. So actually, let's make sure I've reset everything back to how it was. Quick listen one, just to confirm that. I like to call it a condition. All right, and then we will apply my module chain to that, which voice denoise, that comes first. Then we have the voice de reverb and then unmix noisy speech. And if we now mute the noisy layer, we can now listen to the speech. I like to call it a condition more than it is it's because it's induced, it's self-induced. And that deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? It's not me, it's the technology. But there's the noise. You can't really hear much of it, but there is quite a lot of stuff that was removed there. So we've cleaned that up quite beautifully, I think. I like to call it a condition more than a disease. There's a couple of breaths, maybe you could get rid of those if you wanted to. Some people like to, uh, some people like to leave the breathing in the dialogue, especially in, in vocals as well. Some people like it, some people like to remove it. Either way, doesn't matter. We've got a good result and we now mute the noise layer because that resulted from the unmixed noisy speech. Again, more about that in other videos. We can close that down now we can remove that, remove that, and we can now go extensions, make extension permanent, and what have we got? Let's have a listen. I like to call it a condition more than it is it's because it's induced, it's self-induced. And once again, let's undo, undo, have a listen. I like to call it a condition more than it is it's because it's induced, it's self-induced. So, pretty stunning. I think. Um, and like I said, the whole point here is not only how amazing Wavelab and Spectral layers are as tools, but how they can be utilized within 
new window. All right, so that concludes part two of the Demystifying Ara video series, <laughs> part two of two. Um, and in this one, hopefully we showed you a couple of good practical examples of how to use Spectralayers WaveLab or any other R at all that you have within Nuendo itself. Um, don't forget in the first video it was all about R, how it works, how to use it in slightly more advanced ways. Um, but basically these were the practical examples. So before we finish off, quickly just want to say thank you ever so much for your support so far as you know these were the first two videos for me on the Steinberg channel I've been doing quite a lot on my own channel uh, but it's great to see you all over here on Steinberg's official channel and of course as always any comments and suggestions likes subscribes and all that stuff but most importantly to me comments suggestions for, for future content comments about things that I've done wrong and things that I've done right would be really appreciated because I want to get this honed in so that it's great content for you and of course so that it's also uh, a pleasure for me to deliver without having to worry about well would, would the users appreciate this or not. All right I'll leave it there without waffling on any further and I look forward uh, to seeing you on the next one. Thanks ever so much indeed. See you soon, super mega large.